Hello everybody. In this video, I would like to talk about similarity transformations in state space representations. Similarity transformations. Okay, so I'll uh, technically construct the similarity transformation from the perspective of discrete time dynamical systems, but the like derivation formulations are exactly the same between discrete and continuous time systems. Okay, let's start with that state space representation xk plus 1 is equal to g of xk plus h of uk and we have output equation which is equal to c of xk plus d times u of k and it can be a size or mono system it doesn't matter okay so this is a, a state space presentation for a given state definition okay so we always talk about that we can change the state definition and it really doesn't matter in, in terms of input output dynamics. Of course, there, it depends on uh, initial condition dynamics, but from the perspective of input output dynamics, it shouldn't change the dynamics. Okay, so the question is, how can we change the states? Okay, for example, if you have electrical circuits, uh, you can use like capacitor voltage in the current, and you can like derive different kinds of uh, definitions based on these kind of variables. Okay, but there's a formal way of doing that. Okay, so we define x at of k, okay? which is a new state candidate, and we define it in this framework, like we have a P matrix multiplied with X of K, and X head of K is our new state candidate, but P, of course, is an uh, element of our M by N. Okay, let's show the square matrix, and determinant of P has to be not equal to zero, so P should be a non-singular matrix. Okay, if it's a singular matrix, then we will get information, and it won't be a valid state. Okay, so let's try to use it uh, to come up with a new definition. Okay, so what is x? x is technically x of k is equal to p to the inverse x hat of k, right? Okay, so we can just replace everything and move on with the formulation. Okay, so this is equal to p to the power minus 1 x hat x k plus 1, and I will do it first uh, uh, state evolution equation, then I will show how we can do it for the uh, output equation, is equal to g times p inverse, okay, x hat of k plus h times u of k, that's great. Okay, so p is an invertible matrix, so we can take the p inverse. Since p is invertible, we can also move it from here to here, okay, so let's do that. Now let's change the color sometimes. Okay, so let's get there. So x hat of k plus 1 is equal to p times g times p inverse x hat of k plus p times h times u of k. I think that's great, and I think we uh, figure out uh, at this state, uh, state evolution equation. Okay. So what is this? This is the new G hat matrix, okay, which maps the x k, x hat of k to x hat k plus one. And this is our new H hat matrix. As you can see, it's very easy to figure out new G and H matrix. Of course, computationally for higher order system, do it by hand is not practical, but using a uh, like computer tool, uh, MATLAB or Octav, it is super easy anyway. Okay, that's good. So Let's uh, move on and let's also figure out the y of k. Okay, so let's uh, change the. Okay, so y of k is equal to g times x of k plus d times u of k. So y of k, so we're not changing the output, it's important. We're only changing the state definition. It's equal to g times p inverse x out of. It's not G, sorry for that. Okay, it's C. That's great. So it is C times P inverse times X head of K plus D times U of K. Okay, so we change the state definition. This is our C hat matrix, and this is our D hat matrix. As you can see, D hat matrix is the same. It should be the same because the direct connection between input and output does not depend on the state definition. Okay, from this perspective, uh, if, if, with the uh, condition that p times x k is equal to x head of k, 
we found the new matrices in this form. Okay, G hat is equal to P times G times P inverse. H hat is equal to simply P times H. C hat is equal to C times P inverse. And D hat is not changed, it's equal to D. Okay, so this is a similar transformation. We can transform from any state definition to any definition. So why it's useful? Okay, so given an arbitrary state definition, for example, let's assume we want to design a controller or observer. I will talk about it later. Some forms, especially kernel forms, give you much easier representation. For example, diagonal kernel form or control kernel form, observer kernel form, they will guide you such that it is easier to come up with controllers, observers, or even analyze the system dynamics and stability. So for that reason, we may want to change the state definition uh, from an arbitrary given uh, state space representation. Okay, let's solve an example and uh, talk about what we change and what we don't change when we move from one uh, definition to other definition. Okay, good. So uh, let's assume that we have a G. Okay, we have this which is an element of R n by n and what we do is we have a g hat g hat is equal to p to the power of minus one g times p okay so in a similar transformation we transform g to a new g bar or g hat it doesn't matter much and uh, we know that of course determinant p is equal to zero okay so uh, what we want to show here is that g and g hat share the same characteristic equation okay so this is even stronger than having the same eigenvalues so they have the same characteristic equation okay so what is characteristic equation characteristic equation found by using this equation like determinant lambda i minus p gives the characteristic equation of p sorry for that okay it should be g okay a characteristic equation of g Okay, so how we can find the characteristic of in G bar? It's equal to determinant lambda i minus G bar. Okay, let's open it a little bit. It is equal to determinant lambda i minus P to the power minus one. Okay, that's great. G times P. Okay, so nice. So this is an identity matrix, right? So what I, and lambda is a like constant. We know that it can be complex, but it's scalar. So doing some linear algebra strings, I can simply write it in this form. It's equal to lambda times p to the power minus one, okay, times identity times p. It doesn't matter because it's identity matrix and p to the power minus one times p is identity. It's equal to p to the power minus one g times p. Okay, that's great. It's determinant. So what I can do is I can organize things, okay. Uh, this is equal to p to the power minus one lambda i minus g times p okay so this is determinant and determinant p determinant to the power minus one is not equal to zero and determinant of lambda i minus g is only zero when lambda is equal to an eigenvalue so what we can do is using a, a, a identity in linear algebra if you have matrix multiplication inside the determinant you can always pop up the each element such that determinant p minus one determinant lambda i minus g, determinant p, okay, so another identity, determinant p minus one, determinant p, so inverse of a matrix, if you multiply them, it will be equal to one, and it is equal to determinant lambda i minus g. So this is equal to this, obviously. So it states that under similar transformation, characteristic equation of the system matrix is invariant. So it means that it doesn't change. It's important because characteristic equation gives eigenvalues and eigenvalues gives the technically uh, stability properties uh, of a dynamic system. So they are the core uh, features that we define on the stability of the dynamical system.